Okay, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to set up PyCharm for Python development within ROS. So I'm on Ubuntu 20.04 with Noetic. Um, I've used similar setups for Melodic and 18.04, so it should work there, but uh, this is the system I have now. So I'm here in my ROS workspace, and I've got a bunch of packages that I've cloned. Um, and my goal is to be able to do all my Python development within PyCharm and have it work nicely with all the ROS things. So for starters, uh, I'm going to make a virtual environment. Now you can do the same thing with a Conda environment, but it's trickier um, because what I'm going to do is um, add these, uh, the flag that allows this virtual environment to inherit from the global site packages. I believe that's system site packages. Yeah, so the reason you do this is so that you don't have to install ROS inside the virtual environment. So if I source my virtual environment, um, we can see that, you know, I'm still able to use my system things, including ROS, right? So here's in slash off. Um, now I'm going to install my requirements. So this is fairly generic setup for your uh, virtual environment. And once this is created, I'm going to open PyCharm and I'm going to tell it to use this environment. And then I'm going to do some extra things to make sure it knows which directories to look in for my packages. All right, so now that that's done, I'm going to source it. Oh, I've already sourced it. Okay, so now from the terminal, which has the virtual environment and raw sourced, I'm going to launch PyCharm. And I think it is important. I'm pretty sure it may be possible to do other ways, but I'm pretty sure you have to launch it from a terminal that has that environment source. Okay, so by default, you'll notice that PyCharm has correctly found this uh, interpreter, but in case it hasn't, you want to make sure it's using the interpreter in the virtual environment you just created. Project interpreter, and you can see here it's got the right one selected, but you can go ahead and change that. Okay, so it selected the right thing, and I believe we should even be able to see ROS in here. Yeah, here you can see all the ROS things. Okay, so um, just doing that, we're almost done. Um, the last thing we want to do is edit the project structure. So project structure is a way to tell PyCharm uh, which folders you want to include and which folders you want to ignore. And we can use this to make sure that all of the imports in our Python code are resolved correctly. Um, otherwise, you'll get, you'll get errors that appear in the PyCharm editor but are not actually errors. Um, and that's just happening because PyCharm doesn't understand um, like the Python path, in a sense. It doesn't understand where ROS looks for Python things because the ROS Python mechanisms are kind of ad hoc and complicated. So fortunately, there's a way to fix all that. So by default, you'll get one content root, uh, one basically main folder, and that's your, your source folder with all your ROS packages. Um, and it'll, in this case, automatically exclude the virtual environment. So we want to keep that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is add two more content roots. One is going to be my devel dist packages. So here's my cat can workspace, devel, lib, python, dist packages. And the other is going to be your opt ros dist packages. Okay, so find that folder and add that. Um, adding that makes it so that when you type import ros py, PyCharm knows where to look for that. Um, and then adding the devel makes it so that we can import generated messages and other things that are in there. So if we look at the devel folder, we'll see there's all of my packages um, have a folder in here. Those which contain generated messages and services files further have these message and serve directories. Now, we need to make sure we exclude any folder that doesn't contain generated messages or source or service files. And that's because when we type, for example, import arm robots, we don't want to import this arm robots. That's not where the code is. The code is in, you know, in our source 
uh, package armor lots. So um, we only want packages with generated message and service files to be here. And this is yet another good reason to ensure that your message and service um, code goes in a separate package. Um, if you don't do that, then you're kind of at a uh, impossible scenario where you need to exclude this folder uh, in order to be able to use the code in source, but you can't exclude it, otherwise you can't import the messages. So um, make, make all your message and services into separate packages, um, at least for Python, and you won't have this problem. Okay, so I've gone through and I believe I've excluded everything correctly. So all the packages that have message and serves are unexcluded. Um, and then I'm going to go back to my source and I'm going to explicitly mark all of the source folders containing Python code uh, as source. Now, to give you... It was at this moment he knew. He fucked up. Give you a better idea of why I'm specifically doing this. So let's open up a package here that has some Python. Okay, so this is your standard directory structure for a ROS package that has Python. Right, so we have the, the package, source, the package name again, and then the code. And here I have another folder, but you can ignore that. And in this, I have the underscore netapy, and this should be empty, almost always. So here's my empty in the .py, parent directory, source. So in order for the Python import mechanisms to work, this directory source has to be on my Python path. That way I can type from link bot pi common dot uh, animation player import blah blah blah. So for that to work, this link bot pi common, which is this folder here, has to be on the Python path. Um, so there, ha you know, if if you look through every entry in Python path and and you were to ls all of those directories, one of them should be this folder, which means this folder needs to be marked as a sources of root. Um, you can see that reflected in the setup.py as well, right? This source slash link .py common uh, refers to this part of the directory tree here. Now, how do, you may be wondering, how does this work in ROS, right? In ROS, you don't have to you know, specify these source directories. So, so what, what's happening? Well, what happens is catcan generates init.py files in your devel folder that have lots of exciting magic to make this work. So just if you're curious, here's devel link bot pi common, oops, lib python dis packages some pi common. This folder, right, this file right here has some exciting import magic. Um, so fortunately, we don't have to understand how that works. Uh, it's easy to replicate the kind of effect of those scripts by just making every source directory for every package that has Python, you don't need to do it for all of them, I suppose, uh, a source's root. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. We can open up some code and see that all of our imports are resolved correctly. So we've got some standard imports. Here I've got an import of a, a C++ module that has Python bindings, and that's being resolved correctly. Um, no, no red squiggly errors, and you can see if I jump to it, you can see it's here in my devel. Um, we have move it commander, ROS numpy. So move it commander is in opt ROS, and here you can see that that's being found correctly. Um, this is another Python package that I have here built from source, um, and I can go to that, and you can see it's in the source directory, so that's working correctly. Um, as well as message types. So here's Quaternion, and I can jump to the generated message file for that. And probably not so useful to jump to it, but at least it's being resolved correctly. Um, as well as a number of other packages that are either in my source or in OpRos. And uh, they're all being resolved correctly. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to set up PyCharm with ROS.